Hello guys, welcome back to a brand new and improved Tori and Guys video. I'm so sorry me and Kyle have been away for so long, I'm guessing he probably said that yesterday. But, due to your guys' constructive criticism, we're trying to keep our videos a bit more shorter and a bit more bouncy. Um, as you guys may know, if you've seen a couple of videos gone from our channel, we're changing our channel. We're kind of orientating our channel around to the university side of things for you paramedics out there, student paramedics, students in general. We're here to support you, kind of show you through our experiences and how we're going to go for a uni. Hopefully it'll help. Maybe you guys can help us out at sometimes. Anyway, uh, today I'm going to talk about why I, want to, why I want to become a paramedic and my options of universities, why I want to go to that university and open days that me and Carl are going to be going to and giving you feedback and videos on. Um, first off, I'm going to start with, make sure to like and subscribe, leave a comment if you like this sort of content, the usual. Anyway, we did do a video, well I did a video the other week, and for some reason YouTube weren't allowing me to upload that video. For some reason, it just wouldn't happen, and it was, <laughs> it was so annoying. So yeah, um, what I'm going to be talking about today, first off, why I want to become a paramedic. and. The reason why I want to become a paramedic is not your average everyday reason like oh, it's all what, what I've always dreamed of. What I always dreamed of actually was becoming a police officer and due to experiences that I had, it changed my mind. First off, I went to college. I went to Henley College, Coventry, joined public services level 2 I think it was because I'm not the smartest kid in class, I didn't get in to level 3. Which kind of was saying, but I feel as though it's a good thing that I didn't go into that. And yeah, um, yeah, I went to public services where I met Kyle. When I first went in, I kind of had the headset on being a police officer, becoming a person who executes the law and keeps people safe. But what I found in that meant so much more to me. What changed my mind meant so much more to me. I'm not going to say the tutor's name, but he was a paramedic. My tutor, throughout level two public services, he had, I think, about 10 years' experience of being being a paramedic and about seven years of experience being a firefighter and his stories and the way he explained the role to me just it changed my mind it made me feel fall in love with the role of becoming a paramedic and just the idea of saving someone's life or just making someone's life that more manageable and helping someone that's what I wanted to do, whether it's becoming a paramedic, police officer, it's all about helping that person. I mean, being a paramedic isn't all about, I don't know, um, going to RTCs. It ain't all about that, it's just helping people in general. Maybe you're trans one day you're transferring a, um, a patient to hospital, an elderly patient, the next day you are going to an RTC, you are going to a car crash. But it's, it's all about that difference that you kind of make to people. So with police officers, you're not arresting people every day, you're helping people. So yeah. Um, his stories, the way he kind of looks at you, gives that like a thousand miles stare. You can really see he was in that spot, in that moment, when he was explaining the story to you. And that, can't. it did make me fall in love with the role. So I kind of thought to myself, I've got a very big choice to make now. Becoming a police officer, or becoming a paramedic. And that choice, I feel, was the hardest choice I've ever made so far, was choosing that job role. Because if I chose a police officer, who I always wanted to become, and I found out I made the wrong choice, same with being a paramedic, I'd be very down on myself. And, yeah. But, choosing, param choosing to become a paramedic, I feel, is the right choice for me. I don't look like a police officer, look, I'm skinny. I'm sure there's skinny police officers out there, but I'm quite gentle touched, I'm gentle hearted. I don't think I have the ability in me to arrest someone. I, I'm i more of a, I don't know, I'm, I'm a caregiver, I feel. I feel like I need to help someone, not as in arresting them or that sort of thing. 
I need to help someone making their life better by maybe taking them to hospital, maybe saving them when they're on that brink of suicide. And that's what I want to do. That's how I want to be. Yeah. Um, so, he made me choose... He didn't make me. He kind of helped me to make that choice of becoming a paramedic. So, about halfway through public services, I thought, okay, I asked the tutor, I said, how did you come about becoming a paramedic? And he said, back there is different times. It's quite easy to become a paramedic in general, much easier than it is now. I said, okay, can I become a paramedic through this course? And he said, yes and no. Yes, it gives you experience, but no, it's not the qualifications. It's not a health qualification. And I feel as though they should have really told people that at the start. Like Kyle, he went into public services on the mindset that that would get him the qualifications to become a paramedic. And I guess he felt as though he's wasted a year. But it was a good it was good I loved I love public services, it's just it's amazing. Anyway, I'm getting off topic now. Um Yeah, so the course that you really should be going on is health and social care, which is give which is gonna give you that health qualification to get into uni. And doing it at level two public services, I was able to get into level three health and social care. So I've already got a level two qualification. I don't know how it works. It just it just happens, <laughs> really. And we kind of jumped into health and social care in the deep end. Level three, we had we had no knowledge of it. For our public services, it was all hands on, and that's the most. That's how I learn. That's how me and Carl learn. We're hands on learners. But health and social care, it's all written work. And God forbid I had worked my ass off for the past two years to get this qualification. And hopefully I'm just waiting on the on the my qualifications to arrive here, home, hopefully, please God. Um hopefully I would have gotten the qualifications I need. Most unis take distinction merit merit as yeah, you can come in. And at least some some unis do, some unis don't take level to equivalent equivalent to maybe a mass and English qualification. Some do, some don't. I think it's becoming more common that some unis that unis do do that. But anyway. Now the topic I'm gonna go on about now is universities, as I'm rolling on. <laughs> um the uni universities I picked last year was Coventry, Worcester, Northampton, Wolverhampton and Oh, uh, I forgot the fifth one. But yeah, those are my main ones. Um, oh, Northampton as well. Unless I already said that, I don't know. Country, Wolverhampton, Northampton, Worcester. I think I already said that. Oh. Anyway, I picked those four and a fifth, in, fifth one, which I completely forgot now. And my first option is Coventry, because, well, it's got a new building, it's... Every paramedic I've talked to does say Coventry University, but to be fair, they live around the Midlands, so they would say that. I know. Anyway, recently, me and Kyle went to Coventry University on an open day. For some reason, I haven't got the videos from that open day. I recorded them, everything, amazing videos, some amazing knowledge, and they're gone. I don't know where they've gone, so I'm going off my mind. Um, what we did when we went to the university, it's quite, it was an open day, they just made us look around. I'll do a separate visit, uh, video on the open day itself, I don't want this video to be too long winded. So yeah, the open day was absolutely brilliant and honestly it made me fall in love with the country university more. If you guys want to hear more about the open day, make sure you stay... Ah, how can I put this without sounding too beggish? <laughs> Um, if you guys do want to watch any university videos, just, you know, stay on the channel and wait for the video to come up. That's all I'm asking, really. Um, and yeah. So, to get kind of like more knowledge on paramedic, on the paramedic role as a, ro as a whole, I joined a Facebook group. And the Facebook group is called, Do You Want to Become a Paramedic? Or, what's it called? I forgot. Um, 
and it has like over 14,000 people in it. And all that knowledge in one Facebook group is so amazing. Because you get, if you ask a question, you'll get an answer. And you get a very intelligent answer from some of them. Because some of them are, are you're talking to these experienced paramedics. And it's just, it's amazing. I feel like I had a bit, little bit of a lisp then. Anyway, let me find it. Basically, I asked these paramedics, what was your, what do you feel your role is as a paramedic? What's your, what you personally feel your role is? So I didn't want to search on Google, what's the role of a paramedic? Because that's just robotic. I wanted to get into these people's kind of like emotions, what they feel as though they, what, what they feel towards that role. Um, some people, um, one Facebook user says, educated guests work based on half truths and information provided by patients. It's a scary job. Sometimes it's stressful. So it's full of joys, frustrations, and yeah. So, yeah, I kind of got that from that. Is you kind of do have to do a bit of detective work when it is going to a patient because you're not always going to know what's got, what's happened to them. Like. You could just literally find someone in the street, you're not going to know what's happened to them. So, um, yes, another person put, let me find it. Uh, someone else put, best job in the world, privileged. And he's a privilege to become a paramedic. Um, someone else put, 8% of it is communication skills, 5% patience. 15% know how. So it's very communicational based. You have to communicate with that patient to find out what they what's wrong with them. But you can't always communicate with a patient that easily. Some patient might have a patient might have speech impairments, they might not even speak the language. Um and someone else, I'm not saying their Facebook users' names, by the way, because I just want to keep their privacy. I respect them. They're paramedics. Some of them are trained paramedics, some of them are ENTs. That sort of stuff. Okay, so another Facebook user said, your role changes based on the patient you attend. Could be social work for a little of it, um, peace speaker between feuding families before the police arrive, mental health worker trying to understand and appreciate your pa your patients having, oh not appreciate, understand your patient might have uh, depressive episodes and that sort of stuff. Uh, you need to be versatile and a pers uh, people person. So you need to be that sort of person who goes out there and talks to other people. You need to be comfortable. Because when you're comfortable, that patient's comfortable. When you're not, that patient don't trust you. You need, you need to think on, on your feet. And I feel as though thinking on your feet is a very big part of becoming a paramedic. You need to be inventive. You need to make a choice that's best for that patient. I think for me, that would be the most exciting bit, feeling that adrenaline rush go through you as you're treating someone. And that's why I joined St. John's Ambulance Service. And yeah, that's it for today's videos, guys. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you have more ideas of what videos I should do, just leave it in the comments. I'm happy to talk to you guys. I'm happy to get any positive feedback, ne negative feedback, because it helps the channel grow, it helps me to become a better YouTuber and, you know, communicate myself better to you guys. Anyway, uh, leave a like, subscribe, comment, yeah, see you guys in the next one, bye.